They're substances which are designated by the subject terms of sentences and which are talked about by joining those subject terms or separating them from predicate terms. Moreover, within Aristotle's substance world, neither predicate affirmation, joining a predicate to a subject, nor denial, separating a predicate from a subject, should be understood in relation to a notion of states of affairs, positive or otherwise. Notions of states of facts or states of affairs are effectively ontological conceptions that only look basic from a perspective which takes propositions to be the fundamental components of thought, and this Aristotle doesn't do. Aristotle's substance world is a world schematised by term logic, just as the fact world of the Tractatus is a world schematised by a propositional calculus, and the revised conception of predication that Frege had developed on the basis of propositional calculus. Like modern propositional logics, in which negation is typically regarded as an operation applying externally to a proposition, P, to give its contradictory, not P, Aristotle's term logic has two forms of negation. First, one can negate either of the two terms, the subject or the predicate terms, but usually the predicate term, making up a sentence. And secondly, one can deny, rather than affirm, the predicate of the subject of the sentence. Term negation produces the contrary of the term negated. For example, negating the predicate term beautiful would produce a term having the meaning non-beautiful, effectively the term, our term, ugly. In contrast, denying rather than affirming a predicate of a subject produces a sentence that is, is its contradictory. So denying that Socrates is ugly, for example, does not imply that he's beautiful. Moreover, from an Aristotelian perspective, term negation looks the more explanatorily basic form. Denying a predicate f of something presupposes that there is some other, and for Aristotle ideally one, non-f, probably non-f, which can be affirmed of that thing. As Manley Thompson puts it, or has put it, Aristotle's conception of the relation of a sentence like Socrates is unwell, sort of not ill, thought of as term negated way, um, as opposed to Socrates is not ill, resulting from predicate denial, is one of implication, with the first statement as the antecedent of the second. That individual substances are such that they are, quote, capable of being the recipient of contrary qualifications, but not at the same time or in the same sense, is for Aristotle an ontological feature of things which explains their capacity for change since, quote, whenever a substance admits of such contrary qualifications, it is a change in itself, unquote. For reasons that we'll see below, Frege was deeply critical of this way of thinking about negation. Hegel was also critical, but critical in a different way. Frege rejected the independence of the determinacies of term logic, reducing all negation to sentential negation and distinguishing negation from denial. In contrast, Hegel sought to negate Aristotle's approach to negation in his own peculiar sense of negation, a sense which requires, in some way, integrating the negated form within the sort of negating thought itself. Aristotle can seem to invoke the modern idea of, contra of contradiction, uh, for example, in On Interpretation, when he says that, quote, it must be possible to deny whatever anyone has affirmed and to affirm whatever it, what anyone has denied. Thus, it is clear that for every affirmation, there is an opposite negation, and for every negation, an opposite affirmation, unquote. In fact, one translator has rendered Aristotle's latter sentence as, every such pair of propositions we therefore shall call contradictories. But this is an anachronism to regard Aristotle as referring to a pair of contradictory propositions as understood in modern logical culture. This is clear from the sentence that precedes those quoted where Aristotle says, an affirmation is a statement affirming something of something, a negation is a statement denying something of something. As Lawrence Horne has pointed out in his magisterial study of negation called The Natural History of Negation, quote, we should be aware that any translation of the term logic operation of predicate denial into the one place truth functional connective of propositional or sentence negation cannot faithfully render Aristotle's vision, unquote. Denying a predicate of a subject cannot be thought of simply asserting not P, where P is the content expressed in affirming the predicate of the subject. Furthermore, denying the predicate of a subject, for Aristotle, is in itself an act which really only makes sense against the assumption of the object's possession of some contrary property which can be affirmed. 
If for Aristotle predicate denial presupposes term negation, then we would expect that the law of non-contradiction expressed in, the terms, in terms of the impossibility of simultaneously affirming and denying some f of a would be dependent upon some more basic law denying <coughs> that individual substances are capable of having incompatible properties at the one time and in the same respect. Let's just call that law the law of non-compossibility of contraries. Now Aristotle makes such claims in various places and this is sometimes taken as a type of corollary to or perhaps a different formulation of the law of non-contradiction. Aristotle's arguments for the law of arguments in inverted commas because they're not really sort of arguments. Arguments for the law of non-contradiction for example in metaphysical book, Metaphysics Book 4 are notoriously unclear and contain a confusing mix of con talk of contradiction and contrariety as well as logical and ontological contradictions. In some sense, Aristotle just argues more or less that you can't argue for such a law. It's so, so basic. But I want to suggest one reading which I think at least captures the general drift of Aristotle's thought, at least if we sort of think of Aristotle in relation to Hegel. <coughs> in his criticisms of the views attributed to Heraclitus, Aristotle asserts that, quote, <coughs> If it is impossible for contrary attributes belong, to belong at the same time to the same subject and an opinion which contradicts another is contrary to it, then clearly it is impossible for the same man to suppose at the same time that the same thing is and is not. For the man who made this error would entertain two contrary opinions at the same time." Unquote. Aristotle can be read here and has been read by various interpreters as relying on the idea of the mind as a type of substance with thoughts or opinions conceived as its properties, such that the mind's inability to maintain contradictory beliefs is an instance of the more general law concerning the non-compossibility of contraries. On such an interpretation, then, that the mind cannot instantiate contradictory thoughts, the logical expression of the law of non-contradiction in Aristotle, will be taken as an instance of the more general rule prohibiting individual substances, thinking of the mind as a substance, from instantiating contrary properties. From the point of view of a believer's mental substance, as it were, the impossibility of having contradictory thoughts about Socrates, that is, of simultaneously affirming and denying some f of him, would be explained by the impossibility of having contrary thoughts about him, simultaneously affirming some f and some incompatible non-f. Such an interpretation, I think, would suggest that the ontological law, what I've called the non-compossibility of contraries in a single substance, is the more basic idea from which the logical idea of the law of non-contradiction would be derived. However, uh, the actual relation between all these different principles, if they are different in, in Aristotle, is far from clear. What about that? That's a sort of a, a sort of a, a Hegelian eye view, if you like, from from the point of view of what Hegel's doing with Aristotle, I think, um, of what's going on in Aristotle. What of Hegel, however? Well, we might learn something about Hegel's relation to Aristotle on this issue from chapter two of the Phenomenology of Spirit, the chapter named Perception, by Namel, where Hegel considers a cognitive outlook, the general shape of which, I think, is Aristotelian. It's an outlook which takes an unreflectively realistic attitude to perceptual objects conceived as individual instances of natural kinds that are modified by properties that, any, that at any time exclude their contraries. Such a conception of mutually excluding properties is linked to Aristotle's essentialism in the sense that the kind which the individual substance instantiates is relevant to determining just what set of contraries any property belongs to. That is, for Aristotle, it's the form which individuates and it is substances, qua individuated forms, which are the ultimate subjects of predication. For example, Socrates as being either well or ill, but not both, or wise or stupid, but not both, is bound up with the fact that he's a human being, and human beings are the sorts of things that can be well or ill, wise or stupid, and so on, but not at the both time, same time, and not at the, in the same respect, and so on. In the epistemological story enacted in the 